What's up YouTube? In this video, I want to do my best to explain Serum's bus FX system. So I wanna show you a couple of example patches and we're gonna go through basically how it works. Hopefully you'll get a good understanding of the system because it's a little bit confusing at first. Basically it functions like a send FX system as opposed to an insert, which was the original functioning of the Serum effects. However, this whole new system kind of makes things so good for just playing with the effects, particularly for uh, dub effects and that kind of thing, or using uh, just single hits of a lead sound through a rack of effects, like a delay or something like that. But it's also really good at creating what I call like effects washers. So I wanna show you an example here. I've got a really basic lead sound, which I've put together. Um, I'm gonna show you the MIDI as well, just so you can kind of copy it if you want to. And it's just a simple saw wave with some low pass filter, with some envelope on that. And then the velocity is controlling the amount of envelope, the decay, and then a little bit more of that filter. So I've also just got some basic effects here, like compression and reverb on the main effects bus. So we have two other effects buses here in Serum now, bus one and bus two. And these are accessible via the mixer panel over here. So what I usually like to do is I usually like to set up macros here just because it's a, a little bit easier to play, but you're not necessarily limited to macros. You know, if you're doing some kind of sequence, you can set it up so that like just one hit of the sequence kind of goes through um, a, a delay effect and then just one hit goes through like a reverb. I'm gonna show you an example patch of how that's really cool and kind of like dub techy type stuff. Um, but yeah, what I wanna do is um, for now we can just remove that and let's just go in and set up some effects on bus one and two. So usually what I do is I'll set up something like a delay on the one. Let's set it to a one over eight dotted ping pong, give it quite a bit of feedback. So it's important with these effects that at least one of the effects on the buses is full mix. That way, because it's doing like a send as opposed to an insert, what happens is it basically makes a duplicate of that channel. So if you have the mix not at 100% on one of the effects, then you kind of get this little bit of a duplicate of the dry channel, which you don't necessarily want in this example. So on bus two, let's add something like a big convolution reverb. So what I'm gonna do is just on this main, I wanna just turn this reverb down a bit just so that it's not, not as obvious. And then here in the mix, I wanna show you exactly how to send, how to send individual sounds through to those buses. So we can potentially send it from the filter or the oscillator itself. So if we have like a layered example, uh, like a layered patch where we have some kind of sequencing going on, you could have, for example, oscillator B going through one of the effects buses, oscillator C going through a different effects bus, and you can kind of route it like that as well, which is really, really cool. But again, just in this example, we're going to be sending from the filter into either one of these effects. So check this out. I'm just gonna use the mouse for now, but we're gonna link it to the MIDI shortly. So this is cool because if we use something like a dry wet mix, what happens is when you turn the mix up, as opposed to using it in like a send uh, setting, when you turn the mix up, it's already captured and feedbacking stuff from before you've started the modulation. So you turn the mix up and it's already echoing, right? But in this kind of setup, it only echoes what you've turned up. So we can say, give it a couple of hits here. Let's set this to free and bar. And then it's gonna just send through bursts into that delay. Oh, we're gonna have to actually link this modulation. With these kinds of things, we might just wanna smooth it a little bit. Oh, 
How clean is that, eh? Because it, it just sends through little bursts of audio as opposed to just kind of feedbacking in the background the whole time. And then you just mix in the feedback every now and then. You're kind of just triggering the feedback at these points. And then the cool thing about this is, let's say, for example, um, I just want to do one burst here at the end. And then let's go in and actually turn this feedback up quite high, like something like 95%. And then let's modulate this and then go down all the way and leave it there. And then what we're doing is we're kind of creating a kind of build up to a kind of breakdown wash. And this is a kind of effect that I like to use quite often. You see, and it's kind of like captured that feedback and it just keeps going. It's not like, you know, with a dry, wet mix, when you turn it back down again, you've lost the tail, you know? Okay, so we can actually take this a step further and let's assign something like uh, another one of these LFOs. So let's just set free bar. And then let's do a different hit like the beginning, we can send through to the reverb here. So I think we might actually have to just go in and edit this because I think this reverb, I think this impulse response is quite loud. <laughs> Okay, let's just set up some simple MIDI assignments here. Um, I want to remove these modulations that we created here. And what I want to do is just assign a macro to the cutoff, and then I'm just going to MIDI learn this. And then what we can do is we can go into the mixer, and we can assign another one to the delays send, and then one to the reverbs send. And so now this is a really cool way of creating kind of like buildups to a breakdown or something like that. Or you can kind of just play with these effects, like sending little bursts in here and there. Okay, so let's say, for example, we've got some kind of more sequenced chord kind of thing like this, we can make a really cool kind of dub tech type patch by setting up a sequenced LFO to trigger one of those buses. What I like to do is to set up a system where we can either do it to the straight up oscillator itself. So check here, let's send the LFO like this. And we can just send like a pluck. And then what it's going to do is it's going to send a clean pluck because we're sending it before the filter, right? Oh, here we should send this to set this to free and set this to bar. So, so you hear we can kind of create these clean sounds by just sending it directly past the filter. But we're going to apply effects to this like delays and stuff. Too. Okay. 
Okay, so then what I like to do is I like to set up a macro to be the sidechain modulation input for the LFO that sends to that bus send. So let's set this up to a macro here so that we can turn this up to basically set the amount that we want to send. So it basically becomes a send, but it's got a sequence to it. Pretty cool, eh? Let's maybe put a bit of compression before this just to bring up the volume of it. Add a bit of reverb here. And so now the cool thing about this setup is now no matter what we do to this filter, this is going to remain the same. So we can actually change what's happening to that filter. We can set up a different one to send to bus 2 from after the filter. Okay, so the last example that I want to show you today is uh, using the breakbeats kind of system, the slicing system, which I've showed in a previous video. So let's just right click and select auto slice. Um, let's just roughly try to get all the hits. That should be it. Close enough. And we can also say right click and say send to selected clip. And then what happens is it's going to automatically send that MIDI, right, to this clip. Okay, so what we can do is we can actually turn up the tempo. And now we can go into the mixer and we can assign LFOs to both of these send buses. Let's just set them down for now and both to free and bar. Okay, so let's go to the effects and let's assign a delay to one of the eight dotted link ping pong. And we can give it quite a bit of feedback. And the other one, let's actually just do a delay. But you know what? In fact, let's get experimental. Let's do a comb filter. So let's use one of the new comb twos. Now these have some really nice kind of almost delay like effects. But then with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a random Lorenz. Uh, we can set it to free, and then let's set X and Y to modulate these frequencies. We get some nice randomization happening there. Okay, so let's set up a send here like this.
So we can also set this up to sample and hold. And so if we do that, we want to set it up to something like uh, retrigger and then zero hertz, because then each time a new note is received, it's going to create a random value. Cool. Okay, that's about it. I'm going to be uploading the first two of these presets. Obviously, I can't because I don't own this exact sample. Um, but I'm going to be uploading the first two presets to my Patreon for all my $5 supporters. So if you want to know what that's all about, check out the link in the description. And yeah, thank you for watching. Thanks as always. Don't forget the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. And yeah, I will see you guys next time. Bye.